Well, it's, it's um, I mean, it's a, a point that uh, just I want to clear a couple of things up. I had, um, I think, um, you know, I had a conversation with uh, Jack and his father uh, some time ago, and um, uh, naturally th um, he was just breaking into the Aston Villa side at the time. Wanted a little bit of time to think about it. I didn't put any pressure on. I did say it suggested to his father that he might uh, want to get involved in the Oman game. Um, and uh, still not having to commit himself. And uh, Father nicely sent me back a message to say no, the, he would uh, concentrate on the under-21s at that time. I've left it since then. I've had no conversation since. And really, and that's, that's where it remains. Again, would like him if, that, if that's the case, but I'm not, uh, I'm not going to force it. I think I think that's I've just left it. I'm going to I'm just going to leave it, and uh, and I, I, you know it seems to be an awful lot of things going backwards and forwards that I'm not always aware of. But that's that's where I've left it, and that's 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 where it, that's where it stands at this moment. Martin, is there a sense in any way that we, the media, the football public, have latched on to Jack Grealish as the great future? Hope for our football because perhaps we haven't seen as many new faces, new names in the recent past. No. Too much pressure on the uh, No, I can I can understand that. It's like everything else. If some some new kid in town comes in, and um, and I think absolutely, particularly if you see someone um, who has um, um, an eligibility to play for Ireland, of course, breaking into someone's first team at uh, at Premiership level. And uh, there's no doubt the little bits that I've seen of Jack that he's got uh, a lot of talent. It looks as if he's got stronger from the first time that I saw him playing for um, for Notts County against Brentford in a match when he came on as substitute, having been sent out on loan. So um, he's definitely got talent. Um, I think Paul Lambert has said um, uh, recently, if not if not like 20 minutes ago saying that um, he's got a lot of talent, lots to do yet, like everything else. And, um, and sometimes, sometimes I think that there's pressure then uh, put on a young lad to go and, and solve all problems that might be, at, uh, might be there at club level. Might not necessarily be the, be the answer for the player in a long-term basis. But um, he has definitely got talent. And I don't think that... Uh, I don't... Th sometimes... You, People can get a wee bit over carried um, carried away with things, but he's definitely got talent and he's worth considering and uh, and he's worth talking about. But, but by no means suggesting that you, you would react to pressure, but do you think because the big neighbour is watching and casting an interesting glance at Jack Reed as a possibility, there's pressure on us, on you, to include him in the squad, and to have a chance to see them up as a board? Well, again, it's, uh, I'm going to get back to the point. Of course, there's that. I, I'd like to. Um, I'd like to um, um, have, a, as I did have, have conversations with uh, both the player and uh, and his father. But I'm not really there to go and actually uh, turn around and and force someone into a decision that they might not fancy. Let's say somewhere down the line, I'd rather it be coming from those people because eventually that's the best way for it to be. And that's why when I was asked the question there, I'm not going to force it. I'm really not going to force it. It'd be nice to hear someone come up and saying, "Yeah, this is what I want to do." Because eventually, that that would, um, I, I think that would sit better with everyone. Martin, can I ask you about Glenn Whelan in the mm. squad? Yeah, Glenn's in the squad at this moment. Um, initially, I thought that uh, he was going to be out for some time, um, and I spoke to him a couple of days ago. And while he's obviously still um, he's still struggling a little bit. The injury itself is actually clearing up, and uh, he's getting a, uh, he's giving himself every possible chance. I thought initially they might be out to sometime, you know, in early December, if not Christmas, but that was uh, that was not the news coming from him. Uh, he's getting better by the day. He's still um, non-weight bearing in that sense. So, but I thought we just um, I'll give him every opportunity. Um, even if I hadn't included him in the squad here and if he, had, if he had felt good in the next 10 days or 12 days, whatever the case may be, and thought he was capable of, of playing, I would have reinstated him into it. But might as well put him in at this minute because he hasn't ruled himself completely out. And Wes Hula is missing? Wes is word. definitely missing. Yeah, I'd ordered it. Yeah, it's, um, and that is, a, that is obviously a blow. 
Um, the lad is going to be missing anything between eight to twelve weeks, and that's um, yeah. I, I was speaking to him, and he's he's devastated for both the club and country. He did. He did very well. He came in. I thought that. Um, uh, I thought that for a young a young lad coming in in with senior players, I thought he might be a wee bit nervous. He didn't show it in the in the games that uh, the little matches that we played in. In fact, he did very very well. It was always uh, going to be asking a lot for him to be playing in in those games. And while he is, you know, maybe a natural right back where David Myler isn't, we needed some sort of experience down that side, particularly out in Germany. That would have been that would have been harsh to you know to put him in there for that game. But he impressed enough to um, uh, to warrant being in this um, uh, this squad at this minute. Obviously, when we pare it down, we'll see what develops. But uh, yeah, I, he um, he impressed everyone in this couple of days that he was there. How important is it to have uh, Andy Well, I'm hoping by the time that. Um, we get round to uh, uh, to playing Scotland that they're still both available. You know that's. Uh, um, uh, I went to Burnley and watched the two of them play. They played very very well in the game, and uh, I'm hoping that those uh, injuries are behind them. You say that, and then something maybe crops up again. So, um, but um, it is it's nice to see them back playing. Martin, there's been a huge sort of sense of optimism generated by what happened in the final minutes in, in Gelsenkirchen. Mm. From the players and even just travelling back and everything, I mean, how do you, much of a sense, how much do you feel that's sort of lifted their confidence now heading into the rest of the campaign? Well, I think that um, um, uh, obviously a big confidence booster. I mean, it goes without saying, really, that uh, to score in the last minute of the game, to come and, and get something from the world champions on their own pitch was really just fantastic. So you can imagine what it was like travelling back. Players have, um, have naturally gained confidence from that and just a sense that, that, uh, that they can go. We think that uh, I, you know, at Scotland will not be easy, absolutely not. They're, they're flying at the moment. Uh, Gordon Strachan has them playing very well and uh, a great result for them out in, out in Poland, particularly a couple of days after Poland had, uh, had beaten Germany. So, but if nothing else, we could, must go there with some confidence, and that's it's been great. It's um, it's um, it, it's a point away from home against the uh, against the world champions, and uh, you, as I said, you can imagine what it will do for the um, for the spirit of the squad as well. And would you agree that looking at the two teams on paper, there's very little to choose between them? Well. Um, I think that um, um, it's, Scotland have um, they've. I've been been together now under striking for um, for considerably longer. Whether eventually whether that's um, uh, whether that makes uh, a big difference or not, I don't know. But they're 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 in they're in their stride at this minute, and we're uh, and we're trying to get a bit of momentum going ourselves. But uh, we've uh, no we we wouldn't go we wouldn't be going there and fearing the game. We can get beaten in the match, but uh, we'll go as you, as you mentioned with some confidence now after the. Last couple of results. At the start of this campaign, many would have thought Germany being world champions was just kind of one they're going to take that first spot. Has yeah. the outlook on the group kind of altered now with Germany only getting one from their last possible? Not for me. Not for me. I, I don't see this. I think that um, I think that um, I think that you'd have a look at it after five games when everybody has played each other, and um, Scotland and Germany both having you know still to play Gibraltar. And I think then you'd have a look at it. I, I you know, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't bet against the Germans winning the group. I still think that they're by far the strongest side, um, strongest squad, strongest everything. There's only one more game uh, this side of Christmas. By the time that they come round again to playing in in March, and uh, and I don't know when their next game, maybe June or whatever the case may be. But um, no, I see the Germans being still very strong. Whether they've had a hangover from the um, from the World Cup, I don't know. I really don't. But um, they're still they're still strong, and they'll win they'll win the group, and it's still a fight for, uh, for second and third place.